Brian Bran. It looks like we are finally getting another AEW female to join you. Hopefully this figure can stand on like Brandy. Uh, you know what, Comair Lexa? I think you're being a little harsh on the AEW figure line. Honestly, it's nice to have more wrestling product out there, especially more women's wrestling figures. I have just had so many issues with this line. My biggest issue is the fact we are just now finally getting another women's wrestling figure, and this is after around 20 figure releases, and some would even argue if Brandy is even considered a wrestler. We should have had more women's figs by now. Are you done? One more thing, I honestly hate what these AEW figures are doing to collectors, bringing negativity to the collecting game. No negativity here, girl. Ah, shit! I didn't get any chases. Hey y'all, welcome to Lumber Joeville. Women's Wrestling lives here. Now today, we have a very exciting review. AEW Unrivaled Series 3, Riho. Now, this is a highly anticipated review, for me especially, because I pre-ordered these with overnight shipping as soon as they popped up on ringside. And to my disbelief, I was seeing people finding them in stores, people that ordered the whole sets were getting them before me, and as y'all know, I pre-ordered with overnight shipping all women's figures from ringside to get y'all first look. So by now, this figure has been seen by a lot of people. But that being said, that doesn't stop me from getting excited about opening it up and doing a thorough review. Now, I did order two. One to open and one to keep men on card. And the one thing I am going to say is it was very tough to choose which one to open, which one to keep on card. Because they're both really excellent as far as detail and quality goes. And I was pretty shocked. So that being said... Let's choose our victim and take a closer look at the box. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take a moment and appreciate just how awesome and gorgeous this box is. Now, this box is very reminiscent of the old Jax WWE Classic Superstars line, which Jeremy Power was the godfather for. Now, carried over to today, he is in charge of the AEW figures, and he kind of carried that box design over, which, bravo, it looks beautiful. As you can see, it's got little gold accents, very metallic, shiny gold accents with that black base background. Has a photo of Riho on the front, and we'll get a closer look at all her accessories when we open it up. And on the corner here, it has number 20, so the figures are numbered. Also has the series. Now, I believe there's a W on this one. Now, when you line them all up, they spell something out. Um, I'm not too familiar with that because I do collect only the women in the AEW line. Now, turning it around, something else I really love about these figures, and it was the same thing with the Brandy, is most of the back of the box is a really highly detailed photo. And in that photo, it has the AEW Dynamite from October 2nd, 2019 in Washington, D.C., which it was the inaugural episode of Dynamite where Riho won the title. But I love that they put the exact match and a photo from what the attire is from, I think that is just stellar to do. It saves me a lot of research, too. And it also has a little screen-printed autograph of Riho. And you can also see the rest of the line. So, yeah, this box is awesome. The only two things I can say that are a little bad about it is I know a lot of men on card collectors that order them online have trouble with this little piece at the top coming ripped when they get it or the box beat up. And also, it's a little tricky to get out of the box. So, that being said... Let's try to do that. All right, so let's try to figure out how to get this thing open. I know most videos would use box cutters, but unless you want to see me bleed all over this white fabric, let's stick to scissors. All right, so on the bottom here, I notice a piece of tape. We're going to slice that. Skirt. Okay. And on the side here, it looks like there's three little parts of tape to cut. So we're going to cut that. We're going to cut that and then we're going to cut 
this. Now remember, I did get a mint on a card one. So don't hate me, anybody watching this, um, for doing this. Because I'm not going to keep the box. Okay, okay. All right, so it looks like we get that side. We approach the side there, and we open it up here. And yeah, I don't think there's... <laughs> I mean, there's no way to open this up and then reboxer, boxer which is fine. I mean, that's why I got two. But just so you've been on card collectors know, once it's open, it is open. Because this back is sealed to the cardboard backing. So you do have to pry it open like this. And then, boom, shocky walkie. We got a Riho. So let me get her out and display her, and we'll take a closer look. Riho from AEW Unrivaled Series 3. The attire is from the debut episode of AEW Dynamite on TNT on October 2nd, 2019, where she defeated Nyla Rose to become the very first AEW Women's Champion. So before we dive in and take a closer look at the figure, let's cover the accessories and the extra things that she comes with. So the hands that she comes packaged with is a right grasping hand and a left pointer hand. And the extra hand she comes with are a pair of open hands, which I'm probably going to display on her, so you'll see how it looks at the end of my review with these on. And then a left grasping hand, and then this right fist. And I have to show y'all, if you take a closer look, this is like the most highly detailed closed fist I have ever seen in a wrestling figure mold. And I know that sounds crazy, but this thing looks real. It looks so lifelike. But... That being said, let's move on to the main event, and that is the AEW Women's World Championship, and this falls short to me. So to list the positives, the strap looks cool. I mean, the strap is really nice, soft, rubber-type material, and hopefully it'll fit good around her waist. We'll see, but it stretches a little bit, so it looks good. Now the negatives. If you look closely, it's going to be really hard to see with that glare. There we go. The AEW is just kind of a blurred, embossed mess. And the details do look really cheap on there. And I know a lot of people saying, well, the belt is so small, that's why. But I have to show you this WWE Women's Championship that came with the Lundra Blaze in comparison, which is smaller. And if you look closely at it, it has a lot more intricate detailing and designs and printing. So I feel like it could have been done, but it was just overlooked. And they did a pretty crappy job. I mean, from a distance, it'll look good. And I'm not going to let that drag the figure down, but it's just disappointing to look at close, to look up close and just see how a blurred mess it is. So now let's cover the most controversial aspect of this figure, and it's her face scan. When images were first released of this figure, this face scan got ran over, thrown under the bus. People absolutely hated it. It became a meme. And even I wasn't really on board with it. But as I've learned, and the reason why I pre-order with overnight shipping is to give y'all a first look and to show you truly how it looks in hand because you really can't judge these figures, especially the scans, until you're holding it in your hand. And I can tell you with 100% confidence that this face scan is so much better in person and it works. Now, I'm going to put an image to the left and right of her head, just some comparison images that I took, just to show that it's really not that far off. Now, where I think they went wrong is she has this emotion where she's got her mouth open, almost like she's yelling. However, she looks very happy, very jovial. Now, in my opinion, if she has her mouth open like that, she doesn't look like she's emotional, like she's crying, and she also doesn't look aggressive, like she's yelling. So it's almost like more of a valley girl, like, oh my god! And that's kind of the direction it looks like they went for some reason. So that's why it looks off, in my opinion. But just looking at this face from all different angles... It actually does the job just fine, honestly. I think it works really great, and I did not expect to say that, honestly. The hair mold is also a nice dark brown color with some strands molded off in the front. So yeah, this face, from all angles, it works so much better in person. And I'm telling you, if you're one of those naysayers that absolutely hated it from the pictures, I totally get it, totally understand. But this is why I do these figure reviews, is to give you all a closer look, and I can tell you, like I said... With my word that this face scan looks pretty damn good in person. So let's move on to the best part about this figure. And that is this awesomely detailed attire. Now the first thing I'm going to say and point out. Is on her shoulder. On her little wrist cuffs. And on this waist piece. They use this really soft. 
really stretchy rubber type plastic material and it allows for maximum flexibility and posability and it looks great when i first saw images of this figure i thought why aren't they using cloth but whatever this material is it's awesome and i know they used it on the orange cassidy in his lower body to allow hip movement so whatever that is i really wish like elite 83 sasha banks had that for her jacket because it'd be easy to come on and come off also, it has this very distinct scent. Like, I think in 20 years, people are going to open their AEW figures and go, ah, smells like 2021. So I love the nostalgia that's already tied with this figure. Now, taking a closer look at the rest of her attire, she has this molded strap going around her neck with two molded straps going down the right side of her chest. She has this pink strap design painted on her right arm. And then as far as her top goes, which is the only little weird part, it's a molded piece that goes completely around, very linear. What I mean by that is there's a little ledge that's going across the top. In the bottom, it looks a little bizarre given the design it's supposed to be, but they do a good job with the paint application so I can look past it. Now, my Mayor Aaron complaint for this figure is this pink on the chest should be a glittery metallic type pink, but I'll let it go because they do do a good job painting and it's early in the line. This little waist piece here, like I said, it's a soft, stretchy rubber and it's got nice little pink designs all the way around. Her knee pads are white with this painted pink design on there. And then her boots have molded laces as well as this little side piece to the laces there that are painted pink and matches up with those knee pads nice. And then she has black on the bottom of her boots to simulate her little kick pads that she was wearing. So yeah, this rubber plastic material, it's like space age stuff and I love it. So something else I wanted to do was look at her overall size and how the scaling was with this figure compared to some Mattel Elites and also Brandy Rhodes from Unraveled Series 1. But I do want to point out something interesting and unique is the belly buttons on these women's figures are super high. Super high. I can't really tell on her. But with Brandy, it is way up north. I mean, it's like up in her ribs. Just bizarre. And she's laying down because she can't stand. So something else I'm going to point out as far as scaling goes is these are supposed to be compatible with Mattel Elites, but as far as size and scaling goes, it's really not. See, Riho is listed as 5'1", and so is Io Shirai. And as you can see, Riho is substantially taller. Now, Brandy Rhodes here is listed as 5'6", and her figure is wearing heels. So let's say she's 5'9", so she should be about 8 inches in figure height taller than Riho. She should be towering over her. And she's just not. So it, it's a little interesting. I know the AEW figures have had quite a bit of issues with the scaling. It's not horrible. Like, it's not noticeable to a real extreme extent. But Riho probably should be a little smaller, a little shorter. But that being said, like I said, it's not a huge deal. And it's so early in the line, I really hope that they fix and correct it. Because it is a little weird. It is a little weird. And... Until they fix the scaling, a lot of these figures really aren't compatible with the Mattel Elites. So now let's take a look at her articulation. These AEW figures are supposed to have 25 points. So on her head, it's on a little joint that allows her to go forward and back. However, because of her hair mold, it really doesn't allow that much movement. She could turn left a little bit, turn right a little bit, and kind of go in all different directions. But the hair kind of limits it. Now, as far as her shoulder goes, she can go all over the place. It's a ball-type joint. And like I said, with that rubber on that left shoulder, it still allows for extreme movement, and it could actually stay, so that rubber plastic material is great. Now, the elbow is a double hinge, which is nice, and allows for maximum flexion, which is great. Now, as far as her upper extremity goes, it allows for swiveling. And also a little bit of side bending all around her wrist. Hard to see with that little thing. But it allows flexion extension. It also turns pretty well. Moving on to her lower extremity. Her hips here can go in all different directions. She does have skin colored pegs underneath. So it looks a little, a little obscene. But it is what it is. Also that upper hip has some rotation. Her knee... I believe it's a double jointed knee joint. It's hard to tell, but I believe it is underneath that. The knee pad does inhibit that flexion a little bit. Moving down to her ankle, she has forward and backward flexion extension and also a little swivel, so it goes side to side some. And then I'm trying to see, it looks like there's no swivel at the boot level. So that's a little different than the brandy. And here's one last look at AEW Unrivaled Series 3, Riho. So 
overall, I give AEW Unrivaled Series 3 Riho a score of an 8.5 out of 10. Now here's the thing, I've been extremely frustrated as a wrestling figure collector because the distribution of these AEW figures has been a huge problem. I've yet to see one on the peg still. And also, this is only the second woman that they've released in about 20 figure releases and that, that to me is just crazy. And when I saw images of this figure, I was really disappointed. However, I completely ate my words and my expectations got blown out of the water when I received this figure and looked at it up close because it is tremendous and it's a really good figure. And I really don't think you can appreciate it until you're holding it and really look at the attention to detail to it. I mean, this to me is very promising for Jazzwares and AEW in their future and I'm really excited. And like I said, I've had a pretty ho-hum attitude toward that whole series because of how everything's gone. But after I got this, I've almost had a change of heart because I like this figure so much. Now in the future, I would love to see figures of Britt Baker, Sheeta especially, and I really hope we get them. So that being said, let's cross our fingers because this right here shows that Jazzwares and AEW, they can be very promising and they can really release some awesome figures in the future. Thanks for stopping by Lumber Jillville. Women's wrestling lives here. Make sure to hit like, subscribe for a first look at all future women's wrestling figures. We have some exciting releases this month from Ringside, including Elite Series 84 Rhea Ripley and Basic Series 117 Tony Storm, both versions. Also, make sure to check out the Treasure Nice brand new podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, Lumber Jill Cast. Have a good night, y'all.